We are talking through a bunch of important wide receivers on today's show. We've got a dynasty download and, most importantly, a gigantic announcement you don't want to miss. Make sure you subscribe and enjoy. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Oh, welcome in. The Fantasy Footballers, back at it, April 9th. Looks like the world did not end. Was it Was it supposed to end with I the eclipse? I don't know. The eclipse is, uh, I, th- I think so. I it think stopped. every eclipse is supposed to end the world. It stopped all photosynthesis. But the next one, the next one, watch watch out. I didn't get a lot of that. It just was, um, it was just like captivating everybody. It does seem a very classic American take because this was a North American right. eclipse. Right? They did yeah. call if it. Any, if any eclipse is going to ruin the earth, it's it's going to be ours. The, our eclipse. Yeah. yeah right. I, and, and, and there is not another eclipse for another 20 years. Two years, I think, for us. But yeah, it's just for us. Yeah. Like, there's t- there's totally more eclipses, but just not in, not in my America. I think the next like American eclipse only crosses Alaska. Oh, really? So maybe there'll be like a big boon in Airbnbs up there. I don't think we even consider that part of the. <laughs> yeah, like I know the technicality. See. It seems like a lot of Alaskan listeners offended right now. Contiguous U.S. will be August twenty second, two thousand forty four. It does say contiguous. Uh, and this is North Dakota and Montana. Okay. Yeah, maybe it's the one after that. But I know that people were very excited. It was it was very fun. Um so and and it uh it came and it went. And I, and they I, did see I did see it posted the Great American Eclipse is what it was re- <laughs> I'm not joking. I saw that in a news story. <laughs> the Great American Eclipse. <laughs> It's yeah, ours. I, it's 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 the best one anybody's, of all time. Anybody's eyes feel worse today. <laughs> slightly? <laughs> yeah, like just a little bit. I had those ninety nine cent glasses that protect you, but I well, don't that's know a that lot. Of, enough. It's a lot of trust you put into like uh, some random Chinese manufacturer. Yeah. Oh, that's how. <laughs> I did, I, oh no! <laughs> that's how, come on. That's how they win the Cold War. <laughs> they blind us all. I did see a uh, day of a oh, man one a. I Jason think that was getting, getting geopolitical, retweeted. but it was there was a recall. There was like, don't oh, use, no. don't on. use this brand. Well, at that least has they been... found out first. I mean, let me ask you this, Jay: maybe. When you close your eyes, what do you see? <laughs> I just see like, uh, like a uh, a circle, two circles. <laughs> <laughs> I see the Cheshire Cat smile. <laughs> um, well, whether you can see or not, we are counting down our early wide receiver rankings on today's show. Going to count it down from uh, number 20 on our consensus early rankings, right? I mean, it is very early. It very. is pre-draft rankings. But who doesn't love a ranking show? No, they're fun. And I, and there is a difference here between um, how the rankings are made and, and kind of what they mean. So, for instance, when I'm uh, doing these really early rankings, it's a matter of kind of – who would I draft? I try to take that approach, like each one, like if I'm on the clock, would I draft this guy or would I draft that guy? Not necessarily where I think they will finish. Like when we stack guys out in the in the ultimate draft kit, this is like where we project that they're, if everybody hits their most um, probable outcome, that's where they will end. And it, it, it's, it feels like a different practice and an important practice to do it this way. Yeah, it's, it's a way to get a lay of the land. Uh, your first glance at what 2024 might look like and – and so we've put all of our rankings together, and we'll be counting them down on today's show. Um, the Ultimate Draft Kit is available right now, ultimatedraftkit.com, or rather the Dynasty Pass is available right now. This is your pre-order chance for the UDK. Uh, it's a, one of the most fundamental keys to getting ready for your draft, setting that foundation for your team, and you can learn more about the Dynasty Pass and the UDK at ultimatedraftkit.com. Announcing! An announcement. <laughs> That's my Allow me announcement. to announce 
our announcement. This is huge. Well, I we've I did, been we've been teasing it. I've been saying we we have big plans for the draft, mm -hmm. and I didn't just mean the food we're going to order while we watch the draft, which will be plentiful. Yes. Instead, I meant uh, well. I wanted to share this, but we weren't allowed to share it until right now. The thing I'm about to share. Any minute. Uh, no, we are doing a very, very special, first time ever, Fantasy Footballers Draft special. It will be live. It will be on NFL Plus, and it will be starting right towards the very end of round one, Thursday, April 25th. It will be our live and Unique reactions to round one and how it impacts fantasy football. Yeah, the first time that the the NFL media conglomerate is actually doing a fantasy, f you know, featured reaction to the first round of the NFL draft, and we get to participate in that on NFL Plus. So excited. It's going to be great. So your NFL draft day just got better. Yeah, that's yes. true. Please come hang out with us. It's going to be a lot of fun. And – uh yeah, it's, it's. I mean, the draft is so close. We are, yeah, just mere weeks away and gonna live. I mean, the the fact that it's live is gonna be fun. The fact that it's on NFL Plus is just kind of a little cherry on top. So, extremely excited for it. Yeah, it's gonna be a blast. Uh, in previous years, we've done some some live uh, reaction stuff, kind of after you know the day after round one. And yeah, that's for cowards. No, this is gonna be think fresh. about it. No. Instant reaction. Instant. Um, and then we do have a quick question today. Dynasty Download. One of the dumbest questions I've ever seen. <laughs> I'm going to be honest. Philosophically, it, philosophically, this could actually be one of the dumbest questions we've ever seen. But we'll discuss. The question comes in. It says, how do you know when your dynasty team can't compete anymore? Do I sell? Mm. I have no idea. Yeah, I mean, because you've never been there. That's that's what we're saying here. I mean, that's the question says. That's, uh, so our your dynasty, dynasty team, my dynasty team always competes. So we our uh, our our dino league has been. What are we at? Eight years, nine somewhere around there. And Andy's team has never been in rebuild mode ever. I have torn down to the nubs once. I've never torn down to the nubs. I I had one year where I traded a couple pieces to get younger, but, but that's, you, that, that, that you was went, it. You began a process. Yeah, but like you you, you took, did. Yeah, you but did. it was one year. But yes, it's still it's that's a teardown. You can rebuild over one year. So you you made the decision at one point in time. I remember it because you said it out loud. You said, "I can't win the championship this year. Mm -hmm. I'm going to forego a playoff run." You gave up playoffs one year. I, and you rebuilt. I mean, you have B. John sure. and Brees Hall. You don't get those guys without that approach. Yeah, and and I will say that that. So I guess the answer to this question, when we're not just joking and we're saying like, you know, for me, when did that process exist? It was mid season, you know, because uh, you know, I think if you know before the season that like your team just flat can't compete, you're not asking this question. This is a question that you asked. already know. Yeah, you already know. You're like, you've got nothing. Nobody wants to trade for any of your assets. You're going to be in it for the long haul. I think primarily most dynasty managers might not know when. And for me, in my experience, the only time that I did make that decision was when it looked like the playoffs aren't going to happen for me this year. And so because of that, it's like, I'm, I'm out of the running. Let me focus now, shift before the trade deadline to focusing for next year. So I think it's very important, though, since your team is being brought up, to to let people know in the Dynasty community that it's not necessarily this multi-year rebuilding process all of the time. I You know, I, I see this so much. People, like, they'll unload everything, and mm -hmm. then the process has to take multiple years. Like, there is... A, uh, I don't know, like a, a shortcut to a rebuild that's possible with a team as well. And, um, you know, you don't, I mean, to answer the question, do you know if, whether your dynasty team can compete? There is a point when you're not sure. Like Jason went into that year going, maybe. And then like halfway through, it's like, no, 
So, I mean, there there is some discovery there. Like, and to Jason's point earlier, like if you know for a fact you can't compete earlier in the season, you're not as asking this question. And I think if you're not entirely sure, then you should err on the side of you can compete. Uh, I, I, I've seen in a lot of different leagues people that have a team that can compete and they they ruin their chances at a title because they're like, ah, I'm You're just, not talking about anyone in this room, are you? Uh, no, I mean, Papa Josh definitely did it. <laughs> okay. Uh, but it's not just focused on his idiocy. He was an idiot, but that was, I'm talking about a broader spectrum of, like, you do see it a lot where people are like, they're hemming and hawing, and I think sometimes it's just fun. You know, I I, I to, wonder to if that rebuild. was the itch for Josh, Papa Josh. If it was like, I think it would be fun to tear it down. For me, fun is in championships. Sure. The, I think when you're looking at your roster, you have to have at least a a few impact players. Where like if if you just have a whole bunch of steady players on your team and you don't have someone on on that roster in your starting roster, I, I would say at least two where it's on any given week, these can be the guys who can just take over. And if they go off, I win. And so I, cause, cause in my opinion, if you don't have those, and that's also in redraft, if you don't have a few of those types of players, then when you get into the playoffs, you can't win. Let, let me ask you this though. You are, um, you know, my team in dynasty, I have mm -hmm. an older yeah. team, Christian McCaffrey, Josh Allen, but then, you know, Mostert, Kamara, Evans, Lockett, Kelsey. Keenan Allen, Kelsey. Did I, in your opinion, did I wait too long? In your opinion, if you were me, like last year, this is a, this team outscored everybody else in the league by hundreds of points. But nobody wants those players now. I mean, even even McCaffrey to a degree. Like people aren't right. I'm not getting offers of like the world for McCaffrey. So did if no one wants those players, is that past that point for you? So if I were you, I would have done the same thing because your team was absolutely good enough to win a title, and you've got to go after that title. Um, if you're always trying to play that 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 game of well, I want to get younger. I mean, it's always good to stay good and get younger when you can. But when you are really, really close to a dynasty, that's when you need to be a buyer, not a seller, or or to a championship. And you had a very good team. Unfortunately for you, fortunately for everyone else, you did not win the championship. Um, uh, you know, and eventually, fortunately for Mike, eventually you're going to be day. holding the bag. Like Mike and I's co-managed team is th the answer to this question is when they all retire at the same time, which our our roster is going to do in about three years. I'd say the hard part, like especially for Andy's team, what what you will have to navigate the challenge is because your team is so old and you have, and you are always kind of on that verge of. Should I go for it or should I not? And the way that you play, you have no draft picks. Correct. So there could be a masterful move up your sleeve that that you just don't know about it right now. But there's also the possibility that you make one more run for it and it completely falls apart. And now you have no, you have all old players and you have no picks. Here, here's the so truth. So re rebuilding is like you. Can, it is far away. You can compete. For nine straight years, I did it. That's, I mean, right. for some people, they think that, that you you have to reset along the way. At least so far, I haven't paid the tax bill. Nope, not yet. I, I I've been told I will, so we'll yeah. find out. All right, we're gonna jump into the rankings right now. We don't have any. Oh, we do have a oh, bit of news. Just just one quick bit of news. Uh, so if you joined us for our surprise Saturday show, yes. it was surprise live on Friday. It was a ton of fun. Thank you everyone for for coming in here. During the show, we were getting live, more inform updated information about the Rasheed Rice situation and that he had a certain amount of marijuana in the car. And what was being reported was, in Texas, this will end up being a felony. That was misreported so that what was in his car is just a misdemeanor so that there is a difference. There is there is a pretty big difference in, in punishment yeah, it's the from difference the NFL. difference between ounces and grams. So we just want to make sure that we got that information after we were done with the show. And just passing it along. I believe we're talking about him on today's show. Yeah. As well. So um, let's jump into it. Wide receivers. All right. As I said at the top, we're counting it down from 20 to 11. Half PPR rankings. That's what we base it off of. And um, 
We'll talk about the range of outcomes for these players. This is the way that they ended up in our very early rankings. This is not the rankings that we have in the Ultimate Draft Kit. Those will come out after we, uh, after the NFL Draft and after we stat out every player from every team like we do every single year. Um, but this will be a quick overview, sharing some positives about these players, some concerns, range of outcomes, and then we'll get to the top 10 on Thursday. But at number 20, DJ Moore, who will be uh, playing at 27 this year. His best ball average draft position right now is 15, so we've got him a little bit below that for redraft. Jason is the lowest right now at 24. I have him at 21, Mike at 18. And last year, he was the wide receiver six. So all of us are staring down that uh, spectacular fantasy finish and saying, uh, maybe a bit of fool's gold. It was difficult to know when you could play him last year because he had such humongous games. Uh, to that degree, uh, just to speak to his humongous games, his uh, top three performances accounted for just under 100 fantasy points. On the course of the entire season, he scored 238 fantasy points. So that just <laughs> shows oh, you, yeah. okay, you won those three weeks, but he had a lot of duds uh, that that you know were uh, actively hurting your team. Obviously, finishes the wide receiver six. So you know if you're in best ball, you but, you got a ton of those points um, added to your roster. It was an absolutely great pick in best ball, but. Um, I, I think it was a, a rough process if you had him, knowing when you could start him and hopefully, um, you know, I mean, he was in your lineup most every week, yeah. so you're going to start him, but you're taking a lot of L's. And it's a completely different team. This will be a rookie quarterback throwing him the ball. Maybe Caleb Williams is C.J. Stroud. I I would put my bet against that. And then I've been, as you guys are talking, I'm trying to go through the Rolodex here. Like, has DJ Moore played in his career ever with another really, really strong wide receiver? Like, he will be playing with uh, with Keenan. Keenan Allen. Like, Keenan Allen, it, to me, it will be the far, far and away the best wide receiver he's ever had to compete for targets with. Yeah, for context, last year, because DJ Moore had 136 targets, uh, the second wide receiver uh, target leader was Darnell Mooney with only 61. I mean, their fourth wide receiver had was Chase Claypool. He did with play 14. with. He did play with a great one. <laughs> yeah, baby, Devin S. Scrub, just Devin, Devin Funches. Funches. Well, his rookie year was Funches and Curtis Samuel. Okay, I I thought you were gonna bring up Christian McCaffrey. I was where to be like, eh, okay, that's a that's a fair point. But it, the the point being, rookie quarterback, another number one, maybe a rookie number one coming up with the draft. DJ Moore is. A really volatile pick here, it, but he is a—he's a great player. Yeah, he's like a, this. This was not—it wasn't fluky that he finally had a breakout. He is a stud, and I want it clear. Like I've got him down at wide receiver twenty-four. I'll talk about why. It's—it's it's really the combination of Keenan Allen and a rookie quarterback. Those—those those two reasons make me a little bit skeptical. But obviously, he's a super talented athlete. Can um, help you win weeks, and if they get him you know, open in space a little bit more as defenses don't have to completely focus on him. It, it could be a really um, a really good thing for him. But we talk a lot on this show about rookie quarterbacks and how the support of their number one wide receiver historically has been really, really bad. Um, it's rare for them to have a top 24 wide receiver. But we wanted to update this. Uh, you know, things have changed, and it brings up all the time, like the last few years – um, you know, the NFL is always changing. And when you look at too long of a timeline, uh, you, you get outdated information. So we kind of updated our study here. The, what, what is this? Yeah. So, what is this? Welcome to new information. I feel like this could be a setup to dunk on me, but go, <laughs> go on. It might be. Uh, teams are certainly letting rookie quarterbacks throw the ball more. From 2011 to 2018, eight of the 25 uh, rookie quarterback-led teams were in the top half. So that's like 32% of those quarterbacks top were passing? top half in passing. Since 2019, 10 of the 14 are top half. So 71%, almost the exact opposite. Wow. So they are letting rookie quarterbacks throw the ball more. Their uh, completion percentage has gone up from 58.9% to 62.6%. So those are 
those are really good. Yeah, but give me fantasy numbers. Yeah, and so so the wide receiver floors are higher than 2019. Uh, rookie quarterbacks are sustaining more wide receiver 24 through wide receiver 36 uh, production. So that's still not like th – those aren't great fantasy football league winning numbers – uh, but the floor has raised a little bit with rookie quarterbacks. I still worry about ceiling. I mean, I've still got DJ Moore well, at 24. Me, do you because, have those the, the names, though, of the, the wide receivers? Uh, I can grab Cause it. Because I'm, I'm thinking through it of, like, part of it, part of the equation is going to be, yeah, maybe they're throwing a bit more. You're going to need a massive target share, though, well, where I'm, DJ Moore with Keenan Allen, is anybody, or maybe, maybe both of them are just, like, taking all the targets like the Miami Dolphins, and then it's okay. I've got a big question. Maybe this will help. Okay. What if Minnesota had the number one pick? How would you view Justin Jefferson? With Caleb Williams being With Caleb the dude, Williams. If he was their quarterback. He would probably be Would you would you he'd be in the top five wide receivers? He would not be the number one. Isn't he in the top five right now? He yeah. not for me. Oh, I don't, I don't. I don't think he's in my top five. I think he's outside of it. I guess I, I. I just wonder if how much of it is trust in DJ more the talent versus trust in the. You know, if it was Justin Jefferson, do you trust that more, like to demand the target share? Like you know, Justin Jefferson will get it. Yes. With a rookie, the question will be whether DJ Moore can when you have Cole Komet, Keenan Allen, um, you know, DeAndre Swift will catch the football, and, and um, you know. That's kind of why we yeah. have him ranked where he's ranked. Yeah, I, I, I get it. Obviously, DJ Moore's great. He's no Justin Jefferson. DJ Moore, since his rookie year, has not finished outside the top 24 at wide receiver. So he's got that kind of good baseline. He was the McLaurin until last year. Of, yeah, and of he, just always around 20. And he's done it with poor quarterback play. So if Caleb Williams comes in and is allowed to throw more, which it seems like modern-day NFL is allowing you to do that, then – it, it could work out really well for you. What's the stat with Chicago? Don't they have, like, they've never had a 4,000-yard passer, ever. It, it's something insane like that. Yes. I don't know if it's 3,500. I think it's 4,000, but that's just wild. That is wild. I, I, I'm unfamiliar with that stat, but even just 4,000, if that's what it is, that seems darn it, near impossible. Kyle will dig up the leading passer in the history of the Chicago Bears and uh, send that to me. His name is Eric Kramer. <laughs> With three thousand eight hundred and thirty-eight yards. Wow, that's your that's your like benchmark. So let me ask you this: He will not. Is Caleb Williams the best quarterback they've ever? Had? <laughs> not like will he be? Yeah, Is I mean, we'll we'll find out. Well, it depends on how you define best, I guess. Yeah, I mean, the most prolific. The, the, he probably the, will. Be. The Jim McMahon people. Yeah, come that's after why I you. said that. But they're, um, not, they're not listening here. <laughs> I mean, let's be honest. <laughs> they know one coming here. No one's coming here with a pitchfork over Jim McMahon. <laughs> all right. All right. We'll take a break. Come back with number 19. Number 19. Finished at wide receiver 34 last year. Just 25 years old. Hugely disappointing season in fantasy production. I have him the highest at 17. Jason at 21. Mike at 19. It's Jalen Waddell of the Miami Dolphins. 72 for 1,004. Played 14 games, limped off the field in all of them. 14 of them? I mean, it, it was uh, it was kind of a, a running joke. He Paul pierced every single game. He, he would limp off. You'd be like, oh, no. And then he'd come back, and it's definitely not 100% the rest of those games. But coming off of a big fantasy production year, obviously it was it was great for Tyreek last season. But he went from number seven to number 34. And uh, points per game went down. Targets went down. Ironically, it, it seems kind of funny to me because we know how good Jalen Waddle really is. Jalen Waddle's targets have dropped three consecutive years. Mm -hmm. His, well, he, he peaked as a rookie. In totality, yeah. I'm saying on, on, in like last, last year, 14 games, 104 targets. 14 games. Where in la and then 2022 and 17 games. 117 targets. I'm just saying, give him three more games, and he's going to be right around that 117 mark, if not higher. Okay. That's all, all right. I mean. It's just a fun fact, Mike. You don't need to break it down. Well, this is part of my argument for, for Jalen Waddell that he, like, he had a higher catch percentage than his sophomore season. Uh, he actually 
had a higher target share this year than his sophomore season by a couple points. Uh, I just I think it was a, a weird outlier year for Jalen Waddle and the perhaps while Tyreek is there, the hopes and the dreams of when he was the wide receiver seven of it like it's here comes the new Debo Samuel's not the right archetype, but that player, you know, with with McDaniel coming over, we're gonna feed this guy. Uh that that ceiling is gone, but I think that it was just a very bizarre season for Jalen Waddle that he will have a bounce back from. To the tune of range of outcomes for to, him. To the tune of being back back to being a a solid wide receiver too. All right, uh, Jason, you have him at the the lowest of the three of us. It's it's all really close together. Obviously, you know, you know, this is not really one A one B. This is uh, Tyreek is the the one A plus. Yes, Tyreek is the one A. I've I've got him the lowest because I had him in experience. I think this is you know this is you're the, mad. This is just the big experience. Mad. Um, he's got a consistency rating in his last seventeen games played of a C, basically scoring ten and a half half PPR points, only 41.2% of the time. So it's been a bad experience. The one thing that I could say in his, uh, you know, if, I, if I'm defending him with hopes and dreams of, of brighter days, obviously we've seen it two years ago where he was great. Um, and in that, he played on average 74% of the snaps. This last year, while he was struggling with every game injuries, he was down to 68% yeah. of the snaps. So it it leads me to conclude like I don't I don't think that they want Jalen Waddle on the field sub 70% of the time. That that wasn't how they used him a couple of years ago and I expect if he's healthy and doing well, he will um he'll be better for fantasy. Is he uh does he have the potential to be a wide receiver one in your book? Yeah, potentially I, if, yes. it, if it worked out the right yes. way. If it, I yes. think so. Because of his athleticism, the game breaking speed and uh, over the top touchdowns, he could absolutely finish. And if, if DJ Moore or Wada was your wide receiver too, who would you mo be more comfortable with? Ooh, that's an interesting that question. That is a really good question. I, with at wide receiver two, do you swing for the fences and hope that DJ Moore is incredible? I think Jalen Waddle is such a a safer pick for a bounce back. I it, we it, to me Jalen Waddle is I didn't hear a good answer. I didn't hear anything. <laughs> I'm trying to think of that through it out loud. Jalen Waddle to me is one of the most obvious bounce back guys from last year's wide receiver 34, which is his ADP reflects that people aren't buying that he's a low end. Yeah, wide but receiver. so like which one do you want? Uh, I'll go Jalen Waddle. I think I'll go DJ Moore. Um, as, as far as hoping for the upside, you you've got one guy who's coming off of a wide receiver six season versus a down season. You say, well, who's got the better quarterback if things hit right? Could be Caleb Williams. Um, and then you say, well, maybe they're both the number two target on their team. But Tyreek definitely is the alpha. Keenan is great. But Keenan could be, you know, closer to done than, than Tyreek is moving over. So I think I lean on the Moore side. You always lean on the Moore side. Well, I mean, yeah. when you got a surname <laughs> like that. Rashi Rice, number 18. That's it. Yeah, I didn't know give you nothing. Mike's got him at 14. I've got him so, at 22. Obviously, this one is incredibly difficult with... Let's not even consider that right that, now. That's what I'm saying. I have him ranked currently not trying to guess, is he going to miss games? How many games will he miss? This is like just... Is, he suits up for eight, uh, 17. Yeah, this is, to me, the the rise of Rasheed Rice over, that, over the second half of really taking over and becoming like the focal point uh, or, or at least the, the 1B focal point for the Kansas City Chiefs. After the bye week, he was, let's see, he was averaging almost nine targets a game and and was the wide receiver 4, 12, 10, and 16 in that time period. A couple not great games, but he was a rookie. So he, to me, looks like he will be locked in to be the number one wide receiver but it's also strange because you watch him play, and it's not prototypical wide receiver stuff. It is there's still plenty of we got to figure out how to get Rice the ball. That, just let that's him go. why. That's why I kind of disagree. Like I think he'll be the number one fantasy producing wide receiver for the Chiefs, but I don't think at all he'll be schemed the way that a prototypical number one is schemed or Tyreek was. 
Like game plans could not include him. Yeah, and that's not the way you describe a CD Lamb or Tyreek or or Jamar Chase. So I that's my hesitation. You you added Which Hollywood Brown. It. Hollywood Brown who has, you know, uh he's he's been a, a one before. Uh, on a couple of different teams, so I, I'm a little less, uh, I guess, excited about that because a lot of his production was uh, yards after the catch and being schemed yes. open in the in the flat and things like that. Very, he'll be used a lot by Andy Reid, but I could definitely see some consistency issues. Yeah, I've got him at 19, and I I am factoring in like when you know we didn't really sit down and talk about prior to this how are we factoring in off field things. I. I took a look at right now, if I were to draft them today, where would I draft them? It would be at 19 because there is a little bit of worry there. If I knew for sure he was playing 17, I would have him higher than my ranking of 19. After the bye week last year, and they weren't all great games, but he was very involved. His snap percentage went up, which is what you want to see in the second half of a rookie wide receiver. You want to see more and more yeah. involvement as they go, kind of pointing towards year two, taking that next leap. But he was already the wide receiver 14 during that stretch and you know you you saw that you you've seen this with this team and coaching staff and you've got uh Tyree Kill rookie year had 83 targets next year jumps up to 105 targets this was a player who they are were still learning how to get involved in this offense who is clearly right now uh a, a very important maybe the best piece of their um, wide receiver core. So I, I like him taking a step up from where he finished last year, and he finished pretty good. Okay. Finished well. <laughs> Superman does good. Thank you. And he, like uh, his yards per route run against zone was pretty excellent, and which is, that's what Patrick Mahomes is going to have to, to, to deal with if, probably for the rest of his career. Does Travis Kelsey take a half step down moving forward. I know there's with, with all the moving pieces, I think that Rishi Rice is I think that he would be great for fantasy assuming games played. One oh. touchdown of his seven were beyond 11 yards. The, so I'm I'm looking at uh, some notes uh about his yards after catch per reception might be unsustainably high. They are. Yes. It's very it, it's like I said, he gets it was it was more gimmicky stuff for for Rice. This wasn't true. Like I'm a, a really clean tactician, Keenan Allen running great. No, there's routes. not a lot of downfield stuff. And, that, yeah. yeah, but but what blew my mind in that is I'm looking at the yards uh, after catch per reception leaders over the last five years, uh, and it was Debo Samuel, McCall Hardman, right? Debo Samuel, yeah. Debo Samuel, AJ Brown, and oh. Debo Samuel. <laughs> Followed by McCall Hardman and Debo Samuel. Goodness gracious! Yeah, I will tell you who's not unsustainably high: Debo Samuel. Yeah, he's unbelievable. Like, I'm reading through this list. I was like, wait, how could you? I feel like he is on there six times in five years. We got to move on. Number seventeen is Stephon Diggs, thirty years old, now in Houston. The big trade last year: 160 targets, only caught 107 of them. 11.83 in the yardage, eight touchdowns, finished as the wide receiver 10. But the story was the second half. Commanded a bunch of targets, didn't do much with them, changed an offensive coordinator. Didn't like them. Uh, didn't come down with that many contested catches in those in those in uh, in that span. And he did have, I mean, if you remember, he had the big drop uh, late in the season. And so his targets per route run was still similar over the back half. We will see him with C.J. Stroud, and a lot of people want to know how that whole situation breaks down. Saw a little promo video of Stephon Diggs with the Houston helmet on today, you know, doing workouts for the camera. Um, yeah, we've had more time to digest it since the last time we talked about Diggs landing here. I'm a little less bullish than I was initially. I still believe he'll be the number one target at the very least to start the season. I love that this is a – high-flying, down-the-field passing attack, and I think that that will utilize him better than the Joe Brady version of the Bills offense used Stephon Diggs. So in those ways, it's good, but you can't really be like, this is a quarterback upgrade. Even No matter how great you think C.J. Stroud is, he had Josh Allen. And then you go, well, now there's more competition for targets. Uh, you know, he was competing with Gabe Davis. Now you've got legit 
Nico Collins, Tank Dell, whoever's open, C.J. Stroud's going to throw the ball to. So I've got him at 16. He finishes the wide receiver 10 last year. He's getting older. I got him at 19. I think uh, he's he, a wide receiver too. Yeah, yeah, I I think so. Like, and he could surprise. He could he could make the transition. Have one more great year in him. He could. It, part part of the problem is though he's just he's it's terrifying. It's a really scary pick when wherever you're drafting him, there's going to be great players with certainty around yeah, their situation, right around the the ADP of Stephon Diggs. So he's going to be a a difficult draft button. Push. So let me let me ask you this because this is really what it comes down to. If you have to place a one dollar bet or all all your money, you got to put your house on he exceeds. That's very different. Yeah, yeah. We're going we're going because I, I, I want it to matter. He either started it, with a dollar and then yeah. he went like, <laughs> yeah, let's go house. Uh, he either exceeds expectations and is a really good fantasy asset, or he completely fails and is a bust of a pick. Which one is more likely? Exceeds. If it has to be a complete disaster, I guess I would go exceeds. But okay. I would put my house on he will finish probably behind what his ADP is. Oh, I that, okay. That We'll talk a lot more about him. Yeah. I know it. Number 16, Brandon Ayuk, 26 years old, finished at 14 last year. Current San Francisco 49er. Presently a 49er, uh, although his social media would tell you he may not be for long. Super efficient. That was something that I think was unique about Brandon Ayuk is that, you know, he doesn't have to touch the ball that much to make an impact. You'll see this every time you watch the 49ers. I mean, 75 catches for 1,300 yards, played 16 games, seven touchdowns. Touchdowns could, you know, the kind of place he makes down the field, they could be higher. He could have a higher touchdown season. He's much more of uh, the... Uh, lower volume, big yardage, uh, yards per catch type of guys. So that that comes with a little bit of fear, I think, for fantasy players, uh, myself included. Yeah, I mean, we talk about he was very consistent. He was. We talk about he ha was very efficient. He was. But when you have to be, you know, that – when you talk about the percentage of deep balls that he caught, it was awesome, like really great numbers. Those things are all scary to me. They 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 outline what a talented wide receiver he is, what a great season he had. But I don't want to have to have outlandishly high yards per out run numbers to be happy and outlandishly high catch percentage on deep targets and bank on this repeating. So to me, I see those as yellow flags. I not to take anything away from the talent of the wide receiver, but I was surprised while while looking up some some stats for the Bears. I did not realize that the Forty ers led the league in fewest <laughs> passing attempts, also known as were last <laughs> in fewest passing attempts. No, they were last in passing just, attempts. Yes, they, they, they weren't led, last in fewest. They led the league in last fewest. Few, yes. They can't be they, last in They did lead the league in fewest passing attempts, <laughs> and that's how I'm going to say it. No, that's fine. You can't take it away from me. They but led my, the what? league in fewest. My point is he has to be super-duper efficient, and he was. Congratulations, but that, that makes me really scared of drafting him. It, you know, locking just, in a repeat. Is it just the Shanahan system? Because you read all those Debo numbers, and the and the Debo numbers were, I mean, you, Debo ebbed and flowed. Though, I mean, he had right. A, but I'm just saying, of like they they exceed on these types of things. He he. Well, here here's the deal. Two years in that Shanahan system, almost the exact same receptions. Year one, fifth, uh, one thousand and fifteen yards on seventy eight receptions. This year. 1,342 yards and 75 receptions. So exactly. almost the same touchdowns. And uh, if you tell me 13 yards per reception or 18 yards per reception, yeah. which one is the outlier based on the whole of the NFL? It's definitely the 18, which was this. I think that's just highlighting, you know, he's had three straight years where he's right around 13 to catch. And then he jumps up to 18 with some big plays that maybe it could come down a little bit. He also beat up on bad defenses. As one should. Yeah, that that's it's not a huge knock, but it's like when if you're juicing your numbers against the the, the bad defenses where the their the opponents of their schedule is out, so you can go look all that up, and it's yeah, as long as things are still trending from last year, it's going to be a really tough schedule. Mike, I need your take on number fifteen, Mike Evans, thirty years old. Why do you hate him? That's what we want to know because Jason and I, we still believe in another season of Mike Evans. Last year he was the wide receiver five. 
79 for 12, 55, and 13. Almost a uh, IUK number, just doubled the touchdowns. And you've got him at 20. You're basically giving him the middle finger. Yeah, just so, putting him into the dust. Uh, what do you What do you think? Well, he's got the quarterback change. Oh no, he doesn't. Oh, they re-signed Baker. Yeah, but they, they added they added uh, who's the wide receiver they added? They traded for. Um, uh, oh no, that was nobody. That was oh, nobody. Wow. Wow. So he's they, really, so so he's just exactly what he was last normally, year's wide receiver. He's normally five. the opposite because you say he doesn't belong in the Hall of Fame, and Mike normally does. Yeah, yeah. Well, why do you hate Mike Evans, Mike? <laughs> wide receiver twenty, ferocious hatred for that would him. be a that would be a very disappointing year, I think, for where he'll be drafted. Yes. But maybe not because he's best ball eighteen right now. Also, timeout. I do not believe Mike Evans should I not know, be in the I Hall know. of first Fame. Ballot. I've never first said, ballot. Yes, yeah. He's not a first ballot. He's definitely a Hall of Fame. I don't know. No, no, no. The, that, people, <laughs> the people know what you said. They this do. is uh this is not I'm guessing Mike is not endorsing Baker Mayfield. I am I am more freaked out by the the loss of uh Dave Canales. Okay. That's, That's what fair. it is. Of seeing the success we like the two years now of that man being in Seattle. Seeing Geno Smith becoming one of the better quarterbacks in the league that year. Go down here. Baker kind of has a bit of a resurgence. Mike Evans is great, and now he's gone. So, so like that, Metcalf. Yes. What, what happened I, to you Geno? Know what's funny Even though is, Metcalf was better this year than he was last year, or this past year than two years ago. Oh, that was a, he was trying to set him up. Yeah, I set him up. Yeah, again. but you set him up with, like, he was still kind of bad both years. Um, <laughs> here's the deal. Mike <laughs> Evans, I made this point. More like a Tyler Lockett. There you go. When I made the point last year of why Evans would be great and everybody wanted to point out different quarterbacks, different system, different whatever, it was that Mike Evans has been through that a million times. I'm not intimidated by Mike Evans' surroundings. The only thing I'm intimidated by personally is his age and decline. If those things happen, which they will, they happen to Frank Gore and Fred Jackson and you know, they, they, you know Julio Jones, all of these players that eventually went from superhuman to not. That's what concerns me. I'm not really worried about one offensive coordinator when he's had 20 in his career. But um, tremendous risk. I don't disagree with that because they had an outlier season. Baker has not been a world beater forever. Is that what happens to these NFL players when they get near the end of their career? They just become human. They do become they, oh. they, like, you know, it's like, oh, man. Honestly, that that's completely true because <laughs> if you see these players. Humans can't play in the NFL. No, humans, you have to be superhuman. And then once they become human, it's like, ah, they aged out. They're just, they're just a... They're just a human. All right, we got a city to visit after the break. All right, hit the button. Me? I don't even do it. Okay. We built this city. Wait, that's not mine. That's everybody. Michael Pittman at 14. I feel like I just got trapped. Well, you are in the middle on the rankings. So I, sh I should be on there as the highest okay, that's ranker of Michael Pittman. Yeah, right now Jason is inside who's the, the top 12. The current mayor is whoever has him ranked higher. Yeah, that'll just People end gonna, up with one of us at number one. It'll be one, two, three. <laughs> Pittman uh, coming into his age 26, 27 year, 156 targets, 109 receptions, 1,152 yards, four touchdowns. I've got him the lowest, no surprise. I always do. And – um. I, look, I, I'm still concerned. I'm sorry. The targets were amazing. I don't know how thrilled I am at catching 109 of 156. So, I mean, it was Gardner Minshew for most of the year. He only scored four times. Anthony Richardson, like we can't. Wait, you don't, you're not sure about a 70% catch rate? I'm not sure that a 70% catch rate on the targets he'll get from Richardson. Oh, Richardson okay. is running, yeah, that's, is yes. running the football. That's fair. Uh I, I just have a little bit of hesitation because for whatever reason, and I don't know what it is, Michael Pittman, he's just never really been a guy that I think can go out there and put up eight, nine touchdowns. And so then you rely on volume. Yeah, he's at one, six, four, four. So he scored eight times on 207 targets, eight touchdowns on 207 targets the last two years. Do I think it changes because of Richardson? Nope. So then what kind of volume numbers do you have to put up? Like Pittman is the most cozy wide receiver to ever. Like I would love that. I have him at 16. I'm, I'm not disrespecting him. Jason has him at 11, Mike at 15. I think you have to believe a lot of things about Anthony Richardson to get to the top 12 for Pittman. So I think that's well stated because the reason I have him in the top 12 is because I am pretty bullish on Anthony Richardson. 
I believe he comes out and has a very good season this year. His rehab is great. They they talk about how he's pretty much already recovered. How's his, he's, how's his schedule? He's throwing oh super ahead of schedule. I mean the he's That's I good. thought you meant like a schedule for the season. He's working <laughs> on um you know advanced mechanics. He's already basically healed. He's uh, throwing just, forty passes a day. Is what yeah, I saw. yeah, exactly. Um, yeah, I, I just read that article. I, Michael Pittman is one of those guys where you know the volume's already going to be there. He doesn't have the target competition. And he has the money to say that is the true number one. So the volume's there, right? So you draft him at wide receiver 16 or wide receiver 15 or wherever, you know, he goes ADP, which is going to be closer to wide receiver two. Um, it'll either be a back end one. I'm not sure what his ADP is right this second. Wide receiver 20 in best ball. Oh, mercy. But that's all best ball. But my point is, if he's already got that volume locked in, and he's right. I don't he's never think been he has the volume locked in, though. You don't think he's got the target market share of this offense as who, who well else target is, market share is a percentage a percentage and so yes i think he will have the percentage of a lower pie but even if you look at a player like if you think richardson's going to be jalen hurts well hurts you know threw for 3100 3700 3800 yards so you're not getting to the 4000 yard mark your touchdowns are probably not going over 20 so I, mean, and Anthony I, I think ceiling is a concern you talk about the pie and that was a big fear coming in last year you expected or feared a Lamar Jackson esque. This is not going to be a fast paced. We did not get our answer yet. We didn't get our answer, but the very first game of his career, he threw the ball 37 times. And through the season, Shane Steichen had a very fast pace of play. Hit his the next overs game, with he, threw, he was 11 for 25 in his next full game. So I, I'm just saying, we. Don't, I'm not saying you're right or wrong. I'm just saying. I don't think we should draw conclusions from either of those games, which is what I've been saying all offseason. My point is we can conclude that his – and you agreed – his target market <laughs> share his target market share will be a, a, a very, very healthy slice of whatever yes, size this yes. pie is. It will be the largest. His touchdowns – touchdowns are, are not a sticky stat. And so, uh, you know, he hasn't had a huge touchdown season yet, but that doesn't mean he can't score – eight, nine, ten touchdowns. I, I think the targets and the volume is secure and the touchdowns can come up. But if he's already being the wide receiver 20 in drafts, like what? how how low can he finish if he only has four touchdowns, but he's the number one target? I, I it's, think he's a good It's not value. about how low he can finish. It's how high he can finish. That's my only – that's my uh, – why I'm dissuaded. But I always will be. That's the thing you can trust me on. It's weird. It's just weird. Me. I can't yeah, wait. It's just three, because three or four years from now, yeah. he's gonna he's gonna be a my guy. One of the, one of the reasons it. is because statistically, he always ends up exactly where I'm telling you he is going to be, which Ahead is not ADP? not a top twelve guy. Yeah, he could be a value. I'm not disagreeing. Okay. His range of outcomes are not the kind that get me as excited as you. You guys like kind of middle of the road stuff. I'm more of like a ceiling guy. Okay, I like like high potential people. All right, that's fair. You guys are settlers. You settle in Pity City. I move on for greater cities. Let's Have you seen you. the plumbing there? Not, I, good. I, I, not good. You know it's not good. It wasn't. But then all the money started flowing into oh, the town. Oh, are they working on Oh, yeah. He's, he, is a, he is a champion of the city. He's upgrading everything. Michael Pittman's ceiling finish. What is it? And then ceiling, we'll move on. Ceiling the highest is he could finish. Water receiver six. Oh, gosh. Uh, Eight. Wow. Okay. Yeah, I got him at like, like 13. And the lowest he could finish? For me? Like probably 20. Okay. Yeah. I just give him proper respect right I, in the middle. I agree with what you said first, which is you love <laughs> him being a wide receiver too. Yeah, I do. I and do. I do too, and that's where you're drafting. I'd I'd rather have him, I think, than Jalen Waddle at two. I me mean, too. I it, definitely it, would. Much more comfortable. Uh, at 13, Chris Olave. I think you could almost call it a year of lost potential. 87 for 11, yeah. 23 and 5. And that, that doesn't look that bad, but it felt way worse than that. And uh, he finished at 19. He was drafted much higher. This year, we've all got him almost equally ranked right on the edge of wide receiver one territory. He's, he's good. He's very good. He's good, you stupid Derek he Carr. Had, well, and, and he to be. <laughs> you, you stupid, stinky Derek Carr. Stupid, stinky son of a. Making your bad faces when you threw the ball yeah. poorly. Look, they both made faces at each other. That was the problem. There was not a... Do you bite your thumb at me, sir? <laughs> you want your 
potential wide receiver one that you have to draft at wide receiver run range. Is that the first Shakespeare? I think that might be our first Shakespeare reference on the show. I'd be surprised if it was. Yeah, we've done thousands of shows. No, it's not. I want to know that my wide receiver one on my fantasy team has a great rapport with his quarterback. I still don't know if that's going to be the case. Derek Carr loved throwing the football to Rashid Shahid this year. He loved throwing it to Alvin Kamara this year. I don't know if he always loved throwing it to Chris Olave this year. For whatever reason, or last year, he struggled with that. And um, the talent is there. He definitely had a couple of weird games, though, right? I mean, we watched it for the first time. Yeah. Like, I think it was the first time that I saw the bubble burst in my mind of like, Olave's a locked-in guaranteed stud. But then you had a couple games where you're like, what is going on? Is he he's making mental mistakes? There was a drop here or there. Um, so that that's in the back of my mind. It's it, it shows me that I could draft him at this high of a position at 13 and end up with 20. Yes. And that sucks. You know, like he's a too good of a player to end up there, but I don't want the next Terry McLaurin on my team. I want the next Jamar Chase. That makes sense. So you're afraid that this is kind of – you're just going to continue seeing what you saw in his sophomore he's season. He's got a fork is... in the road. He has to choose which direction he's going to go. Is he going to settle in at the DJ Moore in Carolina area? Because mm -hmm. that could happen. That seems – it seems even more likely that that happens. Then to step having... up to be a top five guy. Yeah, because stupid Derek Carr. Well, Derek Carr has not topped – what is that, 25 ever? No, no, no. He has. He oh, one time in the past seven years over twenty five touchdowns. Is that right? That seems or, right. His his peak was. Oh, I'm sorry. Is that what you're saying, Brooksy? Yeah, I'm saying so, yeah, his. So okay. Derek Carr's peak was his sophomore season when he had uh, thirty two passing touchdowns, then twenty eight. Do you know how many eclipses ago that was? <laughs> that was like twelve eclipses ago. But yes, the the twenty five, twenty four, twenty three. That's not going to get the job done. Well, and and touchdowns are the problem here for for Chris Olave. He's he's only one of he's one of twenty one wide receivers with two thousand receiving yards in their first two years, and only Hopkins and Garrett Wilson had fewer receiving touchdowns of that group than Olave. And you just don't see Derek Carr giving him a ten touchdown season next year. So he's no, gonna, and he's not a physical. He's not the physical stature to necessarily just be a like out muscle you down there. I feel like the fork in the road insinuates you're gonna get worse or better this is like he's just gonna keep going straight and you want I him see. to take you want I him see. to take the left turn and go north it's not gonna happen more likely to finish where he did last year at wide receiver 19 or to finish inside the top 10 definitely 19, 19. that sucks it does it does it, it it was an improvement yeah and he's super good yeah like that this is a this is a quarterback issue but Stupid dear car i hate that guy yeah. <laughs> uh don't send in the car stinks uh, smells bad uh so this is the new thing huh yeah this year yeah. there's an odor yeah cooper cup at 12 uh range of opinions here mike has him at nine i'm at 11 jason at 15 Hate in these that. early rankings uh cooper cup is gonna be 31 years old super disappointing last year injury riddled <laughs> i thought you were I thought you were saying it was super disappointing. He's going to be 31 this year. Like, he's going to be 31 this year. Super disappointing Try in that. 40 on for size. That's <laughs> yeah. even more disappointing. Uh, still posted, you know, a very high-end wide receiver, too, on a per-route basis. So don't let the fantasy finish kind of talk you out of Cooper Cup and working him into your draft plan. So, you know, I see a concern here. He's old and clearly not the number one read on the offense. I don't agree. I think healthy Cooper Cup and healthy Puka Nakua is genuinely a whoever's open guy. I don't. I don't think it means that uh, he's not the number one just because he was injured a bunch. So Puka took advantage. I think both guys could be um, the primary focus of an I, offense. I think there, like, there's a chance that it's that Puka is just the new Robert Woods, but a maybe a better version that that is definitely TBD. But I'd, I'm not ready yet, especially with the the flashes of Cooper Cup that we saw last year, like some actual big week winning type of performances. You know, like right when he came back from the injury, we we kind of talked about uh, Cup on the mm -hmm. last show. But wide receiver tw twelve, wide receiver three, just right out the gate. So it 
it's the greatness is still there. The world does not believe that. The world believes right. that he is does not have a ceiling anymore, and you can see that because in best ball, his ADP is a redonkulous wide receiver twenty six. So oh, that, we I'd, may not. I'd scoop. Are that we up. blind? I so we, we we did. We just talked about him a lot on the previous episode. I do not think he is done. He was in the full games where he played and Stafford played the the, the majority of the game, ninety five percent of snaps or more for Cooper Cup. He had 12 and a half fantasy points per game. That's very good. That's not great. That's like wide receiver. I think it was 16, somewhere around Amari Cooper last year. He should finish better than wide receiver 25. I disagree that I don't think – I think he is the two. I, I think Puka has replaced him. Whichever way it goes, Cooper Cup is a value if you're talking about a fourth-round pick. His targets per game when averaged out was 134. He would have been at 134 to 140. Scored in four of his final five games. Cooper Cooper Cup's awesome, and he's a spitwad. Loves the spitballers. So yeah, that's reason enough to put him in your top twelve. I, I I mean, I really don't like where I have him ranked. Which what was it? Uh, oh, not your top twelve. Wide receiver fifteen. Yeah. That feels low. I don't like that. I I, I do think he finishes There's close risk. to around there. But when you're talking about drafting him as the wide receiver 25, 26, I am all about that. In my current best ball leagues, I've got him in. Did he I miss feel like almost first, every single He one. missed four games to start the year. He what missed was it? four. Yep. So last year you could have this is last year was the example of why this year he should, he could be ranked lower. It's because everyone thought they were going to get a bargain drafting the guy. Oh, once he comes back, he might be the one. That's the reason to keep. He just wasn't. He had to come back from an injury and then be the one. Instead, he came back and kept getting hurt and not producing. Yep. And, and then playing hurt. Yep. So eleven is Devonte Adams, thirty-one years old as well. I got him at 8. Mike's got him at 12. Jason at 13. He finished at 11. 103 for 11, 44, and 8. Definitely a situation that could be massively different depending on a quarterback that they find in the draft. 175 targets. <laughs> he was actually a huge, huge fantasy championship deliverer. Oh, yes. He finished if, at if you made it through. The game him, before. Him trying to destroy you in the semi Thankfully, I did. Yeah, he was at eight in week 15. Then he had one catch for four yards in week 16 against Kansas City, which Wait. was the Sneed debate. Hold on. He played 91% of the snaps. Yeah. He played the whole game. He had six targets. And then he followed that up championship week with 21 targets. 21 targets. You just realized that he had two games. With 20 or more targets. So 40 of his 175 targets came in two weeks. 175 had to be near the league lead. Oh, that is an outlandishly high number, especially for a team that wants to run the ball so much. You think about the pace of play the Colts played with and how much they threw the ball and how much of the target percentage went to Michael Pittman Jr. And Michael yeah. Pittman only finished with 156 targets. CeeDee Lamb at 181, Andy. Devontae yep. was number two. Number two. Yeah. And the, uh, Gardner Minshew is now the you know quarterback here. For now. TBD for now. Yeah. Which I do think they're gonna they're gonna get one of them. CD Lamb turned 181 targets into 1,749 yards. Devonta Adams turned 175 targets into 1,144 <laughs> yards. One of those things is not like the other. I'm one of those things a lot older, Mike. Yeah, he. Uh, how many total receptions for CD? 135. Yeah, 103 for Adams. I mean, yeah. there was. Uh, changing quarterbacks, right? You got uh, Aiden O'Connell and Jimmy Garoppolo, and you know disgruntled yeah. Adams throughout so the season. Sixty-three percent of his targets were catchable, so he did great work. With that's the, that's the that's the with, part where with I'm the holding, catchable targets. Like I think we all know that the the talent of Devontae Adams, if it doesn't decline, which it could at thirty-one, but like when he had the ball in his vicinity, it was still the same guy last year. It just it was just disappointing to have no consistency at the quarterback position. He is the kind of guy that I think a head coach like Pierce listens to, and that's why you saw that force feeding of targets in at the end of the year. Yeah, because he's he said, coming off number one, number three, number three. He said, Pierce, I won't be here next week. <laughs> if you don't give me 20 or more targets, I'm not coming back. And so he gave him 21. Yeah, so, I mean, yeah, he listened the, to him. Uh, yeah, I mean, Adams is good. His quarterback is not. We don't know who his quarterback's going to be, but we know he's not going to be good. That's, okay. That's brutal. Yeah, I mean, it's it's fair. Brutally fair. 
similar questions about some of the guys in the top 10 we'll have to talk about. So yep. uh, that'll do it for today's episode of the show. Counting it down from 20 to 11 on Thursday, we'll jump right in to our top 10 wide receivers, early wide receiver rankings. And uh, a reminder, one more reminder at the end of the show. Yes. Join us on draft night, round one reactions, immediately following round one on NFL Plus, the Fantasy Footballers Draft Special. Make sure you are there. It's going to be great. I agree. Some of my opinions that night, outstanding. I can feel it. Take care, everybody. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FFBallers.